Talk to us about what the House is doing today, this vote that you're facing over a $26.1 billion aid package. Well, we came back because the Senate passed the bill, and there really is a critical situation in the states. Uh, teachers and others will be laid off if we don't act, uh, and uh, we have to act. Uh, in a sense, it was expected by the states. Uh, they budgeted uh, for the so-called FMAP money. Um, Pennsylvania, I think, six, seven hundred million. Michigan, four hundred million. Forty-five governors wrote many months ago saying, we needed this assistance. It's interesting, now it's become very politicized. And some of the governors who wrote saying, uh, we need some help just to bridge are now kind of uh, less, uh, less active. So it's become politicized, unfortunately. The need is there, and it's a matter of jobs. And it would go to teacher salaries. It would also go to help states cover Medicaid costs. Yes. And but you when, it the helps, FMAP. when it hel helps Medicaid, we call it FMAP, mm -hmm. uh, some of the lingo here. Um, it really, because it's part of the budgets of states, other employees are affected. That's why we talk about firefighters, we talk about others, because in many states, money goes from the states to local communities. So it's teachers, it's money for assistance for people who need health care and beyond. What are you hearing in Michigan as to what would happen if you did not pass this? Well, the governor and the Republican Senate uh, passed bills and the assumption was there would be 300 plus million dollars and they put that into their budget on that assumption and so if the money doesn't come the crisis gets even worse we're in an unusual situation here I think it isn't really understood this recession was so deep the hole was so large as well as deep this is unusual in any of our lifetimes and digging out of it is a difficult process. It's been controversial. I think you would expect that. And so if we don't act, if we hadn't acted with the stimulus program, it would have been even worse. That's hard to prove, but it's true. Um, I remember the recessions of the 70s. I don't remember the Depression. Uh, of the 80s, the recession. Uh, I came here in, in the early 80s. There was a, a deep recession, nothing like this. I ran for governor the decade before, during a recession. It was deep, but nothing like we faced here. And so we've had to step up to the plate. Otherwise, I think, for example, the banks could have failed altogether. Take the auto companies of Michigan There's, and, and the United States, they're U.S. companies. There's criticism uh, that action was taken. But what if there hadn't been? Chrysler announced it's alive, it's reduced uh, the, the losses this last month. GM is now going to go with a public offering at some point because they're surviving, they're going to have a profit. They say that we'll be surprised by the amount of the profit. I don't know what it will be this month. So th we're on our way back, but we had so far to go. And this action today is a reflection of the effort to fight back. Republicans are critical of any more spending, but Democrats have said this won't increase the deficit, it won't add to the debt, we're, we're pulling money from someplace else, it will be paid for. It is paid for. This bill is paid for. Talk us through that. Well, it's paid for in a number of ways, and I think the most significant way is we pay for it by closing a loophole that helps, that encourages companies to ship jobs overseas. One company has complained about this, saying it will increase their taxes. Well, look, we set up a system, so we said to companies, if you make money overseas, an American company, you don't have to pay the tax until you bring the income back here. And we'll give you a foreign tax credit for what you paid in that country in taxes. But what some companies have been doing is bringing back their foreign tax credit and using it against other income before they bring back their income if they do it all. That's a loophole. And for the Republicans to say we're raising taxes because there's a loophole closing, sure, whenever you close a loophole, when you make people f pay taxes fairly, their, their taxes are going to be increased. Unfair taxpayers should pay their taxes. 
Story and roll call today by Matthew Murray. Union spending big to influence House vote, and he reports that the top union brass are shuttling back to Washington today to make last minute pleas with undecided House members who interrupted their recess for today's uh, vote. And, and AFT, the American Federation of Teachers, uh, will be on the Hill as well as others. H how influential is the, is the, the union uh, support on this one? You know, a lot of teachers belong to unions and some don't. And we don't discriminate as to who's a union member and who isn't. Um, we're talking about uh, several hundred thousand teachers throughout the country, whether they belong to unions or not. And here it is, August, I, I went home and uh, my grandkids are almost in school. And this is important everywhere. We're trying to prevent unnecessary layoffs. And so I think the notion this is just pressure from unions. No, I think this is pressure from the public who want their teachers teaching. And it's pressure from people, teachers, who would be laid off. It's also pressure from other public employees who would benefit if the states get this money that they badly need. And I want to emphasize, 45 governors, Republicans and Democrats, asked us to do this. Then it became po politicized, and some of the Republican governors said, well, I sent that letter, but I won't say anything more. Because we're in this struggle over the deficit, and the debt is important, but we pay for this bill, period.